All right, Quad Standard Labs, Troy here. We have the 12S Swole on the bench. We're gonna give you a quick look at it and a run around and introduction to the machine and how to operate the system. So first of all, this is a 10 inch X8. It's running HQ 10 inch by three props. Uh, we will include a couple of sets um, for you to start off with. However, uh, you can switch to any real 10 inch blade that you'd like. Uh, the tune that we have on here should be good across the board for most 10 inch blades. Uh, as well as the tune and the payload while we're talking about that. Uh, right now you see it with a BGH-1 and a Leawa lens. Uh, this is a really lightweight setup. It was tested and tuned with this setup as well as heavier setups. Uh, we do have a pretty well balanced tune that should go across the entire range of cameras that you're gonna use. Uh, and speaking of payloads and cameras, uh, you can load this thing up with all the way up to a 3,000 gram camera system. So uh, it's not going to be the most, you know, uh, loving flight that, you know, the system is going to be kind of towards the end of its max payload. So you're going to, you know, need to baby it and such. Uh, you're not going to get the highest uh, flight times whenever you're running something that large. But people are wanting to run cameras uh, like the V-Raptor with really big lenses or even a Komodo or some other camera in FX6 uh, fully loaded out and you can definitely get higher up in the range of payloads uh, to somewhere in that 3000 gram range. Um, you can also load this thing up with a uh, RS2 gimbal. Uh, we can do a video on that separately but I want to keep this just stuck to the basic runaround and general introduction. So camera is strapped in but it's also got the thumb screw underneath depending on who you speak with and your own personal preference you may not want to use a thumb screw you may want to use a quarter 20 that has a hex drive and allows you to really get in there and ensure it's fully tightened if you're going to do that you're going to want to raise the plate up as high as you can to get that key in there to really tighten it down we also have right now the 12 volt onboard power that was powering the BGH-1. It just disconnects. It's wired up with an XT30. This cable does not come with the system. Uh, if you buy it from us and we've spoken to you about providing a cable, we possibly are going to provide you a cable. Uh, that cable was mine, which goes to the BGH-1. So your 12 volt, output, 12 volt output is right here, right next to the GPS. It's zip tied in place on one of the inner braces. Uh, it's away from the props, so just always make sure that whatever cables you attach to it also stay away from the props and, you know, you move them away and tie them down with maybe a, uh, with that strap. So we will include an additional camera strap as well as a couple of battery straps. The dampening plate itself is a six-point dampening system. You really need to tighten those down as tight as possible whenever you're running your cameras. We will ship them a little looser. Uh, the reason we do that is we don't want them to stay squished and just start compromising the integrity of them over time. Uh, so that's one the, the main thing about the dampening plate. Uh, the adjuster screws to uh, tighten and loosen the angle, you're going to want to loosen the front ones as well as slightly loosen your hinge points. In this case, we've actually got a negative tilt, which has a stanchion in the rear. So we would loosen this ever so slightly just to get the pivot action. But if we're wanting to go negative tilt, we could then actually loosen the front, drop it down, and then loosen the back and tighten it or lift it up and we go negative tilt. All right. Um, so that's gonna be your, your general camera plate operate or camera plate and how to operate the uh, tilt mechanism on it. Um, GPS, we spoke about earlier, we've got an M9N over here. Uh, it is running beta flight. So you do have your GPS coordinates, you have your general home arrow that you know beta flight tends to be uh, somewhat accurate with. Um, and you can do the GPS rescue functionality. However, just like any of our other models that have beta flight GPS, uh, it is not a return to home. It is not a full on robust system. And you really should uh, go in and learn how to make those adjustments. We can provide some video uh, for you to learn a little bit more about that. Uh, but if you've never operated beta flight return to home or, or I'm sorry, GPS rescue, 
um, you really should kind of dig into that a little deeper. Bardwell also has a really great couple of videos that discuss uh, that functionality in depth. Um, we will in the future, very near future, hopefully be running iNav or have that as an option. Uh, however, iNav is a bit more complicated than Betaflight. So some users that are not familiar with iNav uh, honestly may struggle with something like, um, you know, that system because the configurator and all of the different ways of getting everything set up, um, it, it just can be overwhelming. So we're not shipping them right now with iNav, but in the future we might. Uh, the motors, we've got Xnova. Uh, these actually are pre-production 3215s, 430 kV. Um, again, running 12S on this system. So we've got two batteries. Got both of them right here. We recommend a 5,000 milliamp, the highest discharge rate you can. Uh, again, weight is not gonna be much of an issue with a, with a platform this size. Uh, we use Thunder Power Rampage cells. We get them custom built for us. Uh, these are ours, the standard 5,000s. These are actually out of stock right now with Rampage or uh, Thunder Power. We can start getting them at the end of February, early March, they will be shipping at the latest. Uh, so we will have more of those batteries. On this build, we decided to go with XT90s. We did this for the versatility of the batteries, our client being able to use the same battery on this platform as they would on their Thick or their Sicario or some other uh, platform that's using a 5,000 milliamp uh, XT90 anti-spark connector. Uh, we can also and will in the future be doing these with uh, AS150s. Uh, we do have an 8S build already in-house that has AS150s. Uh, and in the future, we will update the video to show how those plugs will work. Uh, with these two batteries, though, uh, what, the thing, or what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to stack them on top of each other. You're going to want to keep the power leads as close as possible, depending on how long they are, so they can reach where they need to go. We're gonna go ahead and unstrap the extra long battery straps and we're gonna slide these underneath. Avoiding here, we've got the antenna for our crossfire. It's got dual antenna mount, so you're gonna wanna kinda get past that. Um, the other thing that you're gonna wanna keep an eye on is gonna be the COG. So once you, to position the batteries properly, you're gonna need your camera loaded and positioned where you want it. And you're going to want to make sure the center of gravity is adjusted by shifting the batteries as far forward as you need to get it as centered as possible. You've got these notches on the arms. You can actually lift up and you can feel if it's balanced or not. You can move forward a little bit, backward a little bit to see about how much. The platform is going to be very forgiving being how powerful it is on the, on the balance. However, balance is critical to tuning and forward flight and keeping everything nice and wobble free. Uh, as well as just keeping rear motor temps down, being that they're fully the, the motors that are going to be uh, more active at full pitches and, and moving forward flight. Uh, you really just want to try always to keep it as far forward. Uh, a lot of the times this means that this is going to be almost all the way up right before. You don't want to touch the clean plate, but right before the plate is going to be almost right where it goes. It's really so this rear strap is pretty much just barely going to hang on there. It's going to be right at the edge of the batteries. But we're going to strap that first one down as tight as possible. Then we're going to strap the second one down. We're going to really wrench on that second one to get it as tight as possible. And then we're going to come back to that first one and we're going to check it to make sure again, it's really solid. All right. So now we've got batteries in there. I can grab it. I can move it. Batteries are good. So we've got two batteries loaded up. We've got the balance plugs here. We make sure they're not gonna go anywhere, touch a prop. These are very far away, but if you have longer balance leads, you may wanna double, triple check those. Um, on the rear of the machine, we've got two XT90 plugs. It doesn't matter which plug you plug in first necessarily. However, we always try to plug uh, the, when looking from the, the rear, the right side plug first. So it's just my habit. We're gonna plug that one in. Obviously on the bench, indoors, make sure you're being very careful if you're gonna plug this thing in. I, I'm confident plugging this in with props on, but uh, you really should take the props off on the bench. We're gonna plug that second one in. And we can hear the ESCs boot up and they're basically ready to start being armed. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug. And again, you see you've got your 
uh, Crossfire Immortal T's mounted here. We've got one straight across and we've got one vertically. All right, so last couple of things to mention are gonna be USB port. We've got the USB port in the nose right here. It's just a USB, it's hanging out. You can actually grab it with your hands, plug it in nicely, tuck it back in. It's gonna be how you're gonna access the onboard flight controller and do any settings and adjustments when you first get it, checking your rates, make sure your receiver is bound, make sure everything is working, the mode switches, all those things, including that GPS setup and making sure that you have it set up the way you want. Um, so that's how everything's gonna be just a walk around, right? Um, in order to bind, we should be shipping this. If you're receiving it from us directly, we should try our best to always remember to uh, reset the Crossfire receiver if you have a Crossfire receiver. Uh, this means that you should be able to plug in the flight controller with the USB and bind your radio through a regular typical process for your uh, radio, which is typically to go to Crossfire settings, go into the Crossfire menu, select your Crossfire receiver slash radio settings, and then hit bind. Wait for it to connect and say update uh, receiver. Possibly you may not have to, that's, that's dependent on what firmware you're running, uh, and you will update the receiver, wait for it to finish, and you should then be bound. On the air unit, the air unit is located in the front of the aircraft or in the nose. Uh, you'll have that bind button on the regular side that it is on, which is, oops, sorry, uh, the SD card slot, which is right next to our USB. So there's the light that lights up when you power on the drone. It's gonna be red and then it's gonna turn green. Once it turns green, you can go ahead and push the little button next to the light with a toothpick or a safety pin or just something that'll very gently slip in and touch the button. Uh, it'll turn red. When it turns red, it is in bind mode. This means you can go to your goggles, put, power them on, touch the little red button that also needs something to push through the little small hole uh, on the goggle right next to the barrel connector, and that'll start that binding process. Takes a few seconds. Sometimes it takes up to 30 seconds, but typically just about three to five seconds You'll hear the goggles double beep. You'll be able to see video in the goggle. That's going to get you bound up, ready to go. And you can go out and take this thing out for some maiden flights. A uh, couple of notes also, just while we're at it. Uh, our ESCs are mounted on the outside, obviously. They're giant 120 amp APD ESCs. Uh, they have capacitors. The capacitors are glued to the uh, case that we have printed out of ICE-9, which is a thermal dissipating TPU. So it actually takes the heat and helps basically turn it into almost a heat sink, that entire sleeve. So the ESCs are nicely protected from debris, rocks, stuff. Uh, we also have done conformal coating on all of the external electronics, um, including the GPS. Everything has conformal coating on all of the exposed pads, including the internal components underneath those sleeves on the APD ESCs. We have also conformal coated. Um, just keep in mind that though the things are conformal coated, it doesn't mean it's a catch all for all moisture and all wet, wet conditions. So in reality, uh, we don't really recommend flying this thing in too heavy of wet conditions at all. Um, if you really need to, uh, we would definitely recommend talking to us about maybe better waterproofing the rig for something more extended. Um, that's really all that we got for your kind of walk around and overview. Um, we hope you really enjoy it. It's going to be pretty awesome to see what you create with it. Share it with us. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Fly safe, fly smart. Just fly.